be the name of the Lord. Hold hands with someone by your left and right and let's pray in the spirit for a few minutes. Just draw from the spirit as an act of faith. You're praying in the spirit. Pray in the spirit with dedicated focus. Pray in the spirit with your eyes on Jesus. open to receive and I receive by faith. Go ahead and cry. My heart is open set to receive. My heart is open set to receive. My heart is open set to receive. That means you are ready to grow. That means you are ready to rise. That means you are ready to enter into a new experience in the spirit. Are you praying? My heart is set to receive, void of distraction, set to receive, desperate for more. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' marvelous name we have prayed. The Bible says, for without faith, Hebrews 11 and verse 6, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe, number one, that he exists. So you are not coming before an idol. And then number two, that he is a rewarder. That means every spiritual activity you find yourself engaging in tonight, you know that there is a reward. A rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Um, 
I know we have prayed, but I just want us to pray one last time. We are only days away to the Sound of Revival UK Conference. I just want us to take a minute one more time. Hallelujah. God has granted us the privilege once again to take His presence, His power, His word to the nations. And um, you never can pray enough. So in one minute as a global family, I'd like us to pray. Father, a fresh encounter. Rest upon your people. Breathe upon your people. Rest upon your people. Alina shala grogabala kosi vegedia. Rest upon your people. Breathe upon your people. Let your word prevail over the hearts of men. In the name of Jesus, set the captives free. Let yokes be broken. Let destinies be reordered by the Spirit. Let the gospel come with clarity, with precision. Let every dry bone become an exceeding great army. Set men on fire. May they encounter genuine apostolic fire. Pray for all those who are traveling around the world. In the name of Jesus, we speak to the air, we speak to the road, we speak to the sea. For their sake, we declare safety. For their sake, we prophesy safety. That it will be an unforgettable encounter in the presence of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. May the Lord be glorified. Even in this conference, in Jesus' name. Please be seated. Um, so we'll be learning a lot. But then, I must make an admission before we get straight to the teaching. That the subject of altars is not one that can be exhausted in one meeting, one service. In fact, quite honestly... While I was, um, you know, just reviewing my notes again, I just felt that hopefully next year God will grant us grace where we have to stretch, you know, days of meetings. This is an apostolic ministry. So, to stretch days so that it allows us the justice to deal with certain topics. Um, else, you may not gain the kind of spiritual understanding required to walk in victory. But... Um, because I made that commitment, um, would still discuss that subject. So we're looking at greater light. And um, we may not have the liberty to do all the recap. But the essence um, is to be able to bring us into higher and deeper spiritual revelations. We considered from Genesis 1 last week how that the Bible says that God made two great lights. Two great lights. And then he called one the greater light. And he said that one would rule in the night. And then for the lesser light, it will rule. I mean, rule in the day, the lesser light will rule in the night. And then the Bible says that he made the stars also. So he made two great lights. The greater to rule the day. The lesser, he said, to rule the night. Um, and we did say that light in scripture speaks of illumination, revelation. And that light is not at the same extent of illumination. If you are in darkness, what you need is not greater light. What you need is light enough to come out of darkness. But once you are out of darkness, you need the brightness to continue to increase. It is the illumination that turns morning to afternoon to the brightness of afternoon. And evening is defined as we know by the depletion of that intensity. You do not call bright light in the afternoon. Twelve noon has never been considered night time in as much as we know. So you literally use the extent of intensity to determine what part of the day you are in. If it's pitch darkness, you don't call it afternoon in most cases. You call it night. And sometimes if you don't have the luxury of looking at a timepiece, a clock, you literally have to depend on light to help you estimate and sometimes you are able to estimate with precision what time of the day 
you can literally look at the sun shining at its brightest and know that this should be between 12 to 2 a.m. And without prophesying, you get it right. So light can determine seasons. Light can define moments in time and destiny. And we looked at uh, a few things last week, particularly zooming down on the creation of man. We took man's creation to help us define how we should function uh, in dominion. The essence of the teaching last week particularly was to begin to help us understand the foundational components of dominion. We said that man was created in the image of God, still remember? And the likeness of God. And we said the image of God talks of his spiritual quality, the nature of God. Are we together? As revealed in Christ. And then the likeness of God talks about the functionality, the functionality, how to function like Christ, not just the form. It talks about the form, two hands, two feet, one head. But beyond that, it talks of the way God functions. And we took our time to say that no believer will walk in dominion if you veer off out of this architecture. Man was designed to function in a certain way. And that the first part of call is that every man must press to see that image, find visible expression. And I did tell us that the image of God is a compendium of his nature as revealed in his character. What we have come to know as the fruit of the spirit. That the fruit of the spirit is the resultant um, product of that inner walking of the Holy Spirit through the recreated human spirit. And that essentially the fruit of the Spirit is love, manifested as joy, peace, patience, and so on and so forth. I told us that the fruit of the Spirit is not just a virtue, it is an atmosphere. The ideal atmosphere designed for man to thrive is called the fruit of the Spirit. We challenged ourselves by considering how that the deficiency of just one expression of the fruit of the Spirit is what has caused a lot of damage in our world. For instance, the absence of joy. Hospitals are managing patients in their variety because of depression and a lot of other things. Just one, the absence of one expression of the fruit of the Spirit. And I did tell us that man's ideal state that allows for maximum uh, optimized function is to function within that zone called the fruit of the Spirit. Then we looked at the likeness of God, how to function like God. And we said, when it has to do with functioning like God, you have to understand that the modus operandi in the kingdom is the Word of God. The Word of God is the foundational basis for functioning like God. You still remember? That if you do not have access to the word of God, the speakings of God, there is no basis to be able to function like God. Because in the kingdom, everything, the believers walk, if it is to be like God as revealed in Christ, it must be by the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, Matthew 4.4, 4, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. And we said how that... When you want to function like Christ, uh, there are three dimensions to that operation. Number one, you must learn to speak like Christ. The first way to function like Christ is to speak like Christ. Hallelujah. Speak like Christ. Now I've lost the scripture. There's a scripture coming in my heart. Is it Isaiah 2.20? I cannot remember. And if they do not speak after this manner, he says it is because there is no light in them. Very powerful scripture. Uh, uh, media, help me if you can. I think that's um, Isaiah or so, 220 or thereabout. If you don't find it, that's fine. That if they do not speak after this manner, it is because there is no light. Thank you. 820. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. That means those who are possessors of light, there is a way that they speak. Hallelujah. Number two, the second way we function like God as revealed in Christ is obedience. 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 And obedience is not valid until there is an instruction to obey. The Bible says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. 
And that mindset was the mindset of obedience, obedience even unto death. And that there are rewards to obedience. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him, giving him a name, an office that is above every other name. And that at that name, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. And the third way we learn to function like God as revealed in Christ is sacrifice. Sacrifice. Hallelujah. Greater love had no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friend. I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God, Romans 12 and verse 1, that ye offer your bodies unto God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. He calls it your reasonable act of worship. And so I'm just doing a quick recap because it's important that we connect. Um, we're dealing with the matters that help us to walk in dominion. The nature of Christ producing the Christ-like character and that nature, that virtue of the Spirit and then functioning like Christ. So part two would we'll take it a step further. And um, like I said, the subject of altars, you'll be learning. Um, I've discussed a few things in time past about the altars, but um, my concern now is what to omit and what to leave. And so I decided to zoom down on just one area for the purpose of this series, I believe that would take an extended time to deal with the subject of altars. Because in my opinion, I think that there is a lot of ignorance among believers. And one of Satan's advantage, please lend me your attention. One of Satan's advantage as far as um, cutting short the glory of the saints is to deceive the saints into believing that um, realities just because they have been wrought in christ they are automatically finished and executed by default they are finished but not yet executed there are rules of engagement as you'll be learning hallelujah so this is very important jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10 we're looking at tearing down altars this will be part two of greater light tearing down altars i want to teach you how to enforce liberty in the spirit see i have said this day i have said this day i have this day said thee over the nations and over the kingdoms watch the assignment now to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant let's read together now ready one to go see i have this day set thee over the nations uh-huh and over the kingdoms number one and 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 then it says to build and to plant second samuel second samuel verse 20 chapter 24 and verse 25 Shamala glory be to the name of the lord let's read together one to go and david built there an altar unto the lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings so the lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed from israel may the lord open our eyes in the name of jesus now, just as a background for tonight's discussion, the kingdom operates in mysteries. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven operates in mysteries. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. Jesus was teaching and he said, it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. He calls them, but to them, those who are without, it is not given. The kingdom of God and its operations are hidden in mysteries. And there is an explanation for that. Um, I have taught you that a mystery is a secret code of operation that is only privy to a people who are part of a group. Are we together now? For instance, the police force. They have a way they operate. They have a modus operandi. If you are not a police officer trained to understand their language, their gestures, their codes, you may be at a loss whereas communication, intelligent communication is happening around you. If you are a military man, they have their modus operandi. They have a way that they speak. They have a way that they communicate. 
such that if you claim to be a military man there are questions they will ask you and in one minute they know you are not because it will be impossible to be a military man well trained and not understand that modus operandi are we learning now so they are called mysteries mysteries hidden codes of operation that i are privy to a group of people and among the many reasons why god decided to keep truth light as a mystery is because handling the truths of the kingdom has consequences and demands maturity listen carefully handling the mysteries of the kingdom demand maturity there are consequences to it the mysteries of the kingdom is like holding on to electricity imagine allowing your two-year-old child to hold on to a high tension wire now you can imagine the kind of power that is generated from that high tension wire and yet the naive young child just comes to play and if it's a baby who most likely want to chew anything they hold in their hands if you give a little child a knife he's taking it straight to the mouth are we together because as far as they they understand everything is food they attempt to chew give them money they chew it give them whatever they chew it give them your hand they chew it give them you know whatever theirs is just to chew whatever comes to them it will be evil to know that the baby has those tendencies and then sharpen a razor blade and give it to the baby so you preserve it it is not out of the house it is kept somewhere and as the child grows and demonstrates growth through capacity you begin to introduce the child to other more sensitive matters this is why the mysteries of the kingdom are kept and your authorization to access them is your willingness to grow your maturity part time and per season are we together now so don't assume that just because the truths they are not hidden because god does not want you to know them no they are hidden to allow a certain version of you access them so when you press for growth he begins to release the truth the bible says line upon line are we together precept upon precept in layers you learn the rudiments of the kingdom once you are done you begin to delve into weightier matters the bible lets us know that there are certain kinds of foundations hebrews chapter 6 you find that paul was saying haven't dealt with these foundational elementary things he says let us press further let us press deeper let us go to perfection there are layers of truth like light and one of them is what you'll be learning tonight are we together it is amazing that there are many believers and i say this with every sense of humility and respect who are so ignorant as to the other higher levels of light and weightier spiritual matters they just live as victims of the consequences of exchanges that happen in the spirit exchanges that happen within their environment they have not sustained the know-how nor the maturity to participate in deciding their lot in life i'm praying for someone in the name of jesus that as you hear the truths that i'm bringing to you may your eyes be open and may you handle this level of truth that will scale you into dominion in experience you believe that shout a loud amen amen, amen and amen so let's see how god will grant us grace as we deal with this topic um there are a few foundational truths i want to put very quickly and then i'll make some recaps my focus is to teach you how to tear down and to build altars but uh, the average believer is at a loss completely as to the matters of altars and the idea that comes to someone an average believer who may not be trained uh, when we talk about altars the first thing we think about is monuments that are built are seen uh, you know through the bible or are seen in many cultural practices but it's a lot more than that as you'll be learning so please walk with me as we quickly run through the elementary truths that we need to know so that uh, we deal with the core of our matter tonight and we pray i hope you came ready to pray hallelujah now foundational truth number one satan only has an advantage over the saints on three grounds satan has an advantage over the saints only on three grounds it's important you know this that every time you see satan attempt to strike destroy 
oppress any individual, any family, any believer for that matter, even if in Christ. There are only three grounds as revealed in the Bible that authorize Satan or gives him a loophole into the life and destiny of believers. Number one, ignorance. Please write that down. Number one, ignorance. The first ground upon which Satan can met out his rebellious activities, his activity of stealing, killing, and destroying in the life of believers is called ignorance. Number two, disobedience. Disobedience. These are foundational truths you must understand. Number one, ignorance. Number two, disobedience. Number three, covenants. That Satan has only three grounds upon which he attempts to deal with the saints. Number one, ignorance. Ignorance of the truth, the ways of God. Number two, disobedience. Refusing to comply with the terms that commit God. Number three, covenants. Of all of these three, the most far-reaching in terms of its effects are covenants. The reason is because in many regards, ignorance has a personal consequence to an individual and most often stops at the individual. Disobedience can affect an individual, perhaps extends to a few people, but covenants are transgenerational. That means even when the individual who was actively involved in setting up that system is no longer there, it becomes a law that the realm of the spirit recognizes no matter how long. Are we together now? This is very powerful. Ignorance, disobedience, and covenants. The word of the Lord is powerful. The word of the Lord is mighty. The word of the Lord has strength. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. That word has been spoken to us today via God's servant through his word, through the word of God, which has come with power and light. The light shines among men and men and darkness actually could not comprehend that light um, because you are a witness just as Christ has made us witnesses. We believe that this video today has transformed your life. Watching this video today, we believe that you are set for a mighty encounter and God is will do great and mighty thing in your life. If you have subscribed to our channel before, we thank you and we appreciate you by staying tuned to the end of this video. But if you have not subscribed, please do so and subscribe to this um, channel, Connect, see Connect. And if you have not shared the video, Please share to your loved ones so that them too can be blessed just as you are blessed today. And if you have not comment, you can tell us your intentions in the comment section. Click on the notification bell so that you can get daily uploads of our video on a daily basis. And we believe that God will do wonders in your life in the name of Jesus. Remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. We love and celebrate you. Hallelujah.